What's up, Browns fans? This is Ray in L.A., and you're listening to the Dogs Podcast. An MRI of Watson's right shoulder revealed a displaced fracture to the gobble, 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 glenoid? Let's kick this thing off. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, John Nye, and Josh All. What's up, Brown Springs? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Just Blake, me, A, and Justin. Tonight, no Josh or John. Josh uh, has something going on, and I really don't know where John's at. Uh, so, uh, Hopefully he's okay out there. John, if you're watching, just give one of us a call, please. Uh, so, Or if anybody sees John, let him know we were doing a podcast tonight. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think he did text us just before we came on. He did. He could make yeah. it, but I like giving John a hard time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so today, Justin and I are going to give you some of our thoughts on like the Deshaun situation. And then Josh put out a short video. But we want to give you some of our thoughts. Uh, a little bit of what we expect out of DTR going forward and just the Browns quarterback career in general. And then obviously we're going to dive into this uh, this huge matchup with the Steelers, which when you guys are watching this episode, we're going to know if this game is potentially to take over first place in the AFC North. Game's currently going on. You can see uh, the light reflection in Justin's mic as he's watching it while we're recording this. So if anything cool happens, you can let us know uh, on the fly. But yeah, so when you guys are watching this, this is either going to be, I feel like the Browns are in win-win tonight. Uh, obviously, I want the Bengals to win because then yep. we take care of business for first. But even if the Ravens win, then we're just we just gain more ground on the Bengals. So it's it's really win win. But I would I would love to win the division um, because it's it just it's that's the easiest way to make the playoffs is yeah. the win. So we're gonna get into all that tonight. Uh, but before we do that, I want to remind you to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Please like the video. Make sure you tap the notification bell so you never miss any of the neat content we're putting out. Uh, you can also find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google uh, if you prefer to just listen to the show. And then lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to jointhedogs.com and become an official dog pack member on the Patreon page. You get extra episode every week. You get uh, access to the private Discord. That's really the big highlight. You get to hang out with cloud space from all over the world. You get to play fantasy football with us. Um, you might get to meet us one day. We've met a bunch of these guys now. Uh, it's a good time, good online browse community. Uh, so whenever things are great, you got people to celebrate with you. And whenever things are not great, you have people to commiserate with you uh, and uh, help keep your spirits up. Like, uh, well, yes, I found out about Deshaun yesterday. Uh, so that it was it was nice to have the Discord yesterday. Uh, so if you're looking for, for some browse fans to hang out with all the time, you want more content, you want to help support the show, and enjoy the dogs.com and become an official dog. So the and having, you know, a little over 24 hours now to, to kind of digest the Deshaun thing. Um, uh, initially, obviously, like, devastated. I mean, just, I, I'm on my way into work yesterday, and I'm listening to anything I can find about the Browns, you know, all week, just living on a high off of the Ravens game, just really thinking, like, man, this this feels different. We, we are legit. Not only are we legit, I feel like for the first time in maybe a couple of years, the ASC is just kind of wide open. Like every team has lost the Bills of all in all. Like who knows what's going on there? The Chiefs have a great defense this year, but their offense isn't as ex- explosive as it has been. We just beat the Ravens. You know, the Bengals are fighting to even make it in because of the way they started. So it, it just felt like. For the first time, it wasn't being locked up by the Patriots or the Chiefs, like just basically automatically, uh, you know, in basically my whole life. And then, and, uh, and then we're six and three. We just went through the gauntlet of the of the season for us. We played the toughest schedule of almost anybody in the league. We did it with backups everywhere, including quarterback. Um, and we came out of it six and three with a chance to really take control of our own destiny this week if a couple things happen. And I'm just sitting at work and I just get the notification and I, I almost, I, I couldn't even believe it at first. Like, right. I was just, I thought maybe it was fake or some people were just messing and then it was pretty depressing. It's fair. That's fair. I, 
it's I don't know. I feel like it just kind of sums up what it's like to be a Browns fan. Uh, just we we're coming off this, you know, huge momentous win. Like the highs can't be any higher. You feel like just like you said, the the season kind of is in our control. We're finally in the driver's seat. We've gotten through what we thought were most of the obstacles and we're still, you know, thriving. Do we have some issues? Yeah, but I felt like we were figuring things out. The locker room, you know, felt like things were riding high. And then you get the news that, you know, Deshaun Watson has a broken bone in his shoulder and that the season's over. He's getting surgery. And it just kind of came out of nowhere. I felt like, if anything, I was more worried about the ankle. I was like, you know, if he has a high ankle sprain, which they said he did, I'm like, what are we looking at? Like four to six weeks, maybe that we might not have him. And I was just going through the motions again of, what we've already went through the past what five weeks with this so it's just such a tough break and we're in a situation too where it's just like god damn it what are we gonna do now like because to me i went oh well we're going to pj walker and i'm i don't i don't know how anybody else feels but for me i'm like i'm tired of pj walker i'm tired of watching just careless turnovers i'm tired of seeing us just have to like fight for our lives and give everything just a win by a field goal or, you know, a miscue or a, maybe even a bad call. And um, then we hear that DTR starting and in my head, I'm going, I just watched that guy play in, in Cleveland in the Baltimore game. And it was, it was hard to watch. It was very, very difficult. I know everybody's saying that, you know, like he feels like it's night and day and that he's come a long way, but it's just, it's super tough because I felt like we were right at the cusp of really just making a run at this thing. And, and we had our, we were, our destiny was in our hands. It wasn't like we needed help from anybody like in previous years. We didn't need Baltimore to lose and Cincinnati to lose and six other teams to tie and lose. We had it in our, <laughs> we had it in our grass. All we had to do was go and make a decent, I'm, we had to play just decent football the rest of the schedule. And, we're good to go, and it's it's just very deflating, and I don't want to come off sounding negative. I'm heading into this week going, hey, we have a chance to beat both of our biggest rivals back-to-back, and we're going back home. The crowd's going to be great. Cleveland always plays good in Cleveland for the most part. You know, the defense surely does, so I'm not down. I'm not defeated, but it's just such a tough break. Watson, I finally felt like he was getting to that point where you're like, hey, that's He's getting to be that old guy again, and then it's just yeah, it's a tough break. It's a couple of the couple of things I wanted to talk about too. Like, well, one after the initial depression, like a typical Browns fan, by the end of the workday, I was already like, "We're still okay." Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah. And if you do, I know it for like, are we the legit Super Bowl? Can say we don't sign anybody, which we'll talk about. Um, and we roll with DTR, are we legit Super Bowl contenders? I don't know. I don't know if we are. The, the AFC is kind of all over the place this year, in my opinion, so maybe we would be with this defense if he can just take care of the ball. But I do think with all my heart, the Browns are still very much a 10-win playoff team. We yeah. just we just went 6-3 and three through the tough part of the schedule. And it's yep. not like we had to show up for all nine of those games and you're playing great. You know, we we did it with backups. We did it with Deshaun not playing well in the game. Like there was, it wasn't a take. We needed to have our anchor quarterback out there carrying us through these first six wins. Um, And if you look at the remaining schedule, yes, there's a couple games now that look like they could be a little bit tougher. Like the Texas game is probably going to be tougher than we anticipated. But the Broncos, I don't think the Broncos are are good per se right now. Their offense lacks any explosion. I think they kind of look slow. Russell's playing better. He's taking care of the ball and stuff, but he, he's definitely not, he's still not what he was. Right. But um, I think what's really helping them, like their defense is starting to play like the defense we thought it would be. Their defense you know is going I mean? going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and now all of a sudden it looks like a tougher game than maybe we thought it was going to be a month ago. Um, but I still think, like, it, it, in all reality, you just like a four. And I think there's clear, we still got more than likely the Jets with Zach Wilson. You got to think, even with as great as their defense is, like we can squeak that one out. You got to think we can beat the Bears. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback for us. Um, I, 
I, I still think we beat the Broncos. Like, I just think from here on out, even if we win, that they're going to be ugly wins. They're going to be we're pulling our hair out. We're yeah. going to be, you know, at the end of the game, we're going to be like, man, are we even any good? But we're going to get the win, you know, mm-hmm. because I think that's yeah. just kind of the way we're going to have to play now. Um, but I do think that, like, there's no reason to punt on the season. And, no. and I think it's been good you see out of the locker room, like the defense has come out a bit like, you know, um, the other team will score, they can't win. You know, so I really think the defense is going to rally. I love the, how tight this locker room is. Yeah, I, I already liked Savansky, but this year is I just like he like you know even more, more whenever I hear his post game speeches and some of the stuff I'm hearing say to the media. Like the dude has the buy in from the locker room. I feel like mm-hmm. this year he he is closer with the guys than he's ever been before. It seems, uh, and I think the kind of beating up that I definitely think Jim Schwartz has been a good influence on him. Yeah. You know, in terms of just. Like how to connect, you know, with the locker room and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and which is what we always want. We wanted him to have a defensive coordinator that had that kind of experience to kind of, you know, kind of guide him a little bit. And I feel like it's been night and day. Just the way I still interact with guys on the sidelines compared to in years past, I feel like it's night and day. So I feel like he's going a long way. Um, I just, I have a total body with the, the team. I really think they have a chance. And still do so. And then if you make the playoffs with this defense, you know what's looking at. Absolutely. You know? and, and and I'm seeing notifications popping up. I mean, Ravens are but Mark Andrews probably out for the season. I just saw Lamar got hurt. Mm-hmm. I don't know how serious it is, but like if he's out for any extended period of time, like all of a sudden, you know, like everybody's banged up in the AFC North now. Like yeah. eventually it's still, you know what I mean? So um it's still theirs for the taking. I don't know. I, I still feel confident. Um but it's it's still soft. I mean, like it's like you said, he he had played the three previous game or the three last three full games he had played. We talked about this. He had thrown for almost like he had over seven hundred yards, five touchdowns, only one pick, a sixty eight percent completion percentage, uh, three and zero. Oh. He just went fourteen or fourteen in the second half, um, and it was like you were like man, like everybody's like one good half of football. But if you're a Browns fan, you can pay attention. It wasn't one half of football. It's like three full games he's played. Like he's played pretty well. The first half of the Ravens game was definitely a little ugly, but it the whole the whole team was a little ugly in the first half. Yes. You know what I mean? And um so like nobody remembers the Patriots. like nobody talks about the Patriots Super Bowl when they came back for down twenty eight three. Nobody mm-hmm. talks about them sucking for the first two and a half quarters. No. They talk you know what I mean? They talk about how great the comeback was. So it's just why you gotta talk about the, the comeback was great. He was 14 to 14. So the only people focusing on the first half are, are honestly haters and not real fans. Um, but I think we can put to bed the like the this idea that he was it's it's still the, the the it was announced by like people come to me at work that he was faking it. And I just was instantly irritated. It's frustrating. It's and I'm like, guys, and then you you have then you're here the reports like he wanted to get pain shots he wanted to play like he saw multiple uh like nine or ten doctors uh, yeah opinions and, yeah and the guys who told him they're like we can't even really believe you finished the game with this in the first place mm. like one wrong hit like here's the thing guys as bad as it sucks and trust me it sucks and i'm not saying it doesn't put it it doesn't make the trading worse because and I've always said the best ability is availability and injuries are part of it. Like we pull a break out and bust in the NBA because it couldn't stay on the court. You know, mm-hmm. so this trade right now is not, it's not looking great. I'm not now gonna sit here and say that it looks great. But I, I can't grade the, the trade on the first two years of the four and five year deal. Right. You know what I mean? Because if it comes back next year and we play great and we go to a Super Bowl, then it was worth it. Then the trade is an A plus. So we can't grade it yet. Yeah, but this this definitely puts a damper on it. Um, but man, the guy wants to play. You could tell how long he was. When he, you know what I mean? Like you could tell, like, man, I just got back to it. And, and it's gone again. So hopefully he has a good recovery. Um I'm, it's good to hear you guys in the locker room so they're gonna like kind of rally around him. They're gonna uh go down wherever he rehabs and work out with him. I think it'd be cool that I don't know what the rules are and stuff, but like man. I'd have him and Chubb on the sideline for some of these games, especially these home games. Like far off the sideline, far off the sideline. Yeah, like, on the, but you know what I mean. Like, especially the start, it's his shoulder. He can still stand. Like Chubb, but I mean, think about the, the energy the crowd would have. Like, if 
the Chubs at the side and we're playing at Pittsburgh and they have the team that took them out and we're, we're coming out kind of like chip on the shoulder Cleveland against the worry and we got to do this with our back up again and then Chubb comes walking out like I feel like a stadium would win but so okay. um I would love to see I don't think it'll ever happen but I just thought that'd be cool idea um absolutely before we move on real quick, Browns fans in Ohio, Caesar Sportsbook is running a new sign-up offer. You don't want to miss. New customers can get their first bet on Caesars up to $1,000 by using our code DOGS1000 during sign-up. Not only will your first bet be covered, but you'll also be directly supporting our podcast. So if you have not yet joined Caesar Sportsbook, now is the perfect time to make your move. Just remember to enter our code DOGS1000, all one word, when you sign up and place that first bet. This offer is only available for new customers who are 21 and older and physically present in Ohio. Please gamble responsibly. If you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms of the offer to see if you can qualify. What do you think happens in terms of, do we try to sign anybody? I don't know, man, because when it first broke, I thought there was probably like five or six names that kind of popped in my head. And like Nick Foles, kind of like Matt Ryan, um, Philip Rivers, like guys that that are out there and and they're pretty much done and we've said they've been done for a long time. But at this point, you know, it sounds like we we definitely would need somebody. I I I was adamant I'm like I can't do more PJ Walker and we've already said that. I can't do any more PJ Walker. No, I if think it's 100% the right idea to go with DTR. Yeah, I, I I agree. And if you watched Barry's press conference he basically said, I'm, I'm good with who we got and I don't think we're going to make any moves. And I was just like, oh man, like, and that was before they even announced DTR. Now there's guys out there and I'll let you kind of tee it up. There's yeah. guys out there, but I think that the guys that, that Browns fans are kind of like clapping for, like, let's say like Tom Brady, Tom Brady's not coming to Cleveland. No, I mean, he's not coming to Cleveland. I don't even know if he's allowed to because he's a minority owner with the Raiders. I don't know how all that works. Yeah. Um, I thought there was interesting names, though. Like Nick Foles, I thought, you know, I know he is awful the last time we saw him, but I'm like, there's guys out there. When it first happened, my initial thought was, really, any of these guys would be better. I'm not saying any of them are good, but they would at least – like look like they belong on the football field. You know what I mean? Um, the more I hear about DTR, the more I'm setting myself up for disappointment because I'm I'm anxious to see how he performs. Um, a, a name I just saw before we came on here, a guy who's kind of making his pitch to the Browns, like, hey, sign me, was RG3. And I thought, with interesting, you know, um, he says he, he still runs a 4-3, he says he still trains like he's in the league literally every week just in case something like this because he had to officially retire and he's wanted to get back on teams so he's been keeping himself in shape. Um, I, I'm not sitting here saying RG3 carry us to a Super Bowl, but man, I would at least, I don't know, what does it hurt to call him a bring him in for You know what I mean? So he's been, in, he's been in the building before. Uh, he's mobile. He can run. He, he's been analyzing the game now uh since you know he hasn't been on a roster so he's he knows the game he's played a lot of football but uh, and worst case scenario he's just he's a good locker room guy he's good in Baltimore he's really good for Lamar um so I would give him a call because here's the thing is even if DTR even if you bring him in he, and RG3 even said this like you bring me in and GTR plays well and then you roll with DTR to be the starter he was like I would be a great guy to back him up mm. to, you know to kind of like show him the rank, show him how to be a pro and that kind of thing. Like I was, I'm a, I did it for the Lamar. I could do it for him. Um, I it sounds to me like he would come in with the right attitude. Uh, and, and hopefully DTR rolls out. That'd be a muscle. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but worst case scenario, if he gets hurt, I didn't, I, I just don't want to watch be able to play anymore. And I, and I, I appreciate everything we did and he's fun, but it, it, at the end of the day, we're really still trying to stay in this thing. And, um, it's just, I mean, if he is a plan, we'll rally around him, but it's just, I, I'd rather, like, if, so I, I would give him, I, I would give him a call. I think he's the rival officer. I, I name it, I thought it was. I, I think at the end of the day, Andrew Barry owes it to the defense and some of these other skill guys on this team to at least make some calls. 
you have yes. got to at least make some calls because my thing, and you kind of touched on it, DTR is going to be the starter. Do you want PJ Walker mentoring DTR? Bring in a, at least a veteran guy that knows the ropes a little bit. I'm not saying PJ Walker isn't a isn't like a, a pro's pro because he's been done everything basically. He's done XFL. He's done he's done everything. He's been everywhere. But I I would just love to bring in a guy that just knows the ropes of how this league works and has been there, done that. And I I'm not saying that that guy has to be the starter. If DTR. I, I think there's going to be growing pains. I don't think that he goes into this game and he he throws for 300 yards and four touchdowns. I, if you're thinking that, that's unrealistic. I think we're going to be very run heavy this game. I think their running back trio uh, is going to get a lot of touches. And I think that they just kind of bring him along as the season goes and just see where this thing goes. I mean, at, that's at our point. I think they, they looked at the P.J. Walker situation and said, if we want to, if this is the reason we got rid of Baker, they said we this guy in clutch moments makes mistakes and we he can't take us to the places that we want to go. So you can't turn back to PJ Walker and go, hey, we're going to be in some tight games, but you're not going to be able to throw three interceptions and you know allow a strip sack fumble. You can't. I you and I, I think the fan base would absolutely lose their. You think they're mad now, just on petty stuff. You cannot turn to him and then you go into Cleveland and let TJ Watt get a strip sack fumble, you know, walking into the end zone. You can't do that. I, I'm I'm frustrated that we're we're bringing him in into the situation again because it just feels like the Baltimore situation all again. But at least there's a week of you are the guy. It's not a doubt. It's not an hour before the game. And I I believe coach will have a good game plan where it's it's smart for him. I don't think that it's going to be an open playbook. I think it's going to be very simple. We watched the film. There were guys running around wide open. He just, the vision wasn't there. He didn't see the guys. He missed his reads. It was, it was ugly. It, it wasn't a good game for him. And it's not a knock on him. He's a fifth round rookie quarterback that got tossed into a awful situation at the last, at the last second. I mean, we all were frustrated about it. I don't think that it takes any value away from who he is going forward. I still think that he can be a talented guy in this league. Um, but we'll see. I I don't I wouldn't expect 40 attempts unless things completely go out of hand. You know what I mean? Like there there's gonna be a game script to this, and I don't I think even if it gets ugly, they won't get off that game script. I don't think they're gonna throw him to the wolves again. I just I can't see that. Head over to omahasteaks.com right now. Enter code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out. Get $30 off your order right now. Are the last days of the semi-annual 50% off site-wide sale at omahasteaks.com. So get your orders in. I think this promo ends at the end of the week, if I'm not mistaken. So Omaha Steaks is the best meat. You've heard us talk about it on this show for like two years now. I mean, we love Omaha Steaks. I just ordered another pack of this stuff uh one of their one of their packages i got the 50 percent off of course i use the code dogs got the extra 30 dollars off great deals find what anything you want over there at omaha steaks it, they have something for everybody it's awesome it's great food just want to remind you guys to take advantage of this semi-annual sale now before it's over omahasteaks.com enter code dogs when you check out minimum order may apply this episode is sponsored by factor Browns fans, get started on your New Year's resolutions with Factor, America's ready-to-eat meal delivery service that takes all the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success here in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, all the prep work, and the cooking fatigue. Instead, you can get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more, plus they have over 55 weekly add-ons, you guys have a ton of nutritious and flavor-filled options to kickstart your resolutions. I've personally tried Factors meals. They are incredible. I got a whole bunch of different varieties of things just to see what was what I liked, what I didn't, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. I liked them all. You throw it in the microwave, two minutes, and bam, you have a nutritious meal ready to go on the fly. And the nice thing is when things get hectic, Factor is totally flexible. You can change your order up every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week. You can even pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime you want. 
So here we go, guys. Let's stress less over our meal times in the new year. Let's get Factor's no prep, no mess meals, no shopping, no cooking, no cleanup. Head to factormeals.com slash the dogs50. That's all one word, the dogs50. Use code the dogs50 to get 50% off your order. That's code the dogs50 at factormeals.com slash the dogs50 to get 50% off. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I'm really hopeful this week. Like I, or I'm hopeful that I think TTR over the course of the last eight games, I think he's going to be able, I, I anticipate him to be able to play well in some games. And mm-hmm. when I say, well, I don't mean like the world on fire. Right. I just mean, take care of the bullock game manager. This game, yeah. this game, I think it could, he could struggle. Yes. But I, I'm hoping his struggle is, uh, to, it's not turnovers. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, if he comes out and he goes like, nine of 22 for 90 yards and but he didn't turn it over i'll be like at least he didn't put the defense in a bad situation right you know like both are just like i really don't care about a stats this game at all just the only one i care about is is the turnover stat yep just zero turnovers please just give yourself a chance with the run game and with the defense yes. um because after this, like the Jets have a good defense, a, a really good defense. The Broncos' defense is really coming along, but this is going to be at are the most aggressive, like front. You know what I mean? Like, yes. The, 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 in terms of like individual talent, and you want to be the best guy he plays in the game. It's coming off the edge, the rest of the season. You know, so yeah. it's it's just survive this game. And, you know, and I still think we can win this game. Absolutely. We get not a turn it over. No, so and- that's what I'm saying. Like. Just don't force it. If, if if it's not, if you got to take a sack, take a sack. I don't care how. I really don't care how ugly this game is on the offensive side of the ball. Like, just, as long as we're not giving them. If if we have to, if we have to punt ten times, and we only score ten points or something, I I really just make all bring them over and give us a chance late. But that's that's all I want out of the offense in this game. Like, yep. and and then if if it's it's a three score game and we. We get the ball with a minute and a half back in, in, in a timeout, and then he's got to let it rip. And he ends up throwing the pick late. It is what it is. That's our early options. But at least everything up until that point gave us a chance to be in it and a chance to win it at the end. I don't want to be out of this. I don't want to be out of it in the first quarter like the last time he played. I agree. You know, I agree. Um, so, and, and I think uh, we were handled really well against the Ravens. Uh, and, I, and I think we're going to get DeWan Jones back. Yep. Uh, I think I saw why Teller was at practice today or did he miss practice? I can't remember. I do not know that. Yeah. Um, but I think we're going to be, I think we're at least going to have Jamal Joe's back, which is big. So I did not want to build up against TJ. Um, mm-hmm. is even though he did a serviceable job, the Ravens don't have the edge rusher. They don't have an edge game. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to run the ball. I, I hope four builds on the game he just had. Yeah. Like I hope he, I hope that part of like an eye opener, like, uh, yeah. These guys are fast. I don't need to dance. Like, just let's just hit it and go. And if it's two yards this time, it's two yards this time. Next time, it might bust for seven or eight. You know. Right. Yeah. Um. So I, I look for that. It, it just keep the stupid game. Give yourself a chance. Make sure you have a chance to win it in the end. And, and that's all. I, that's really all I want to see. I want to see zero turnovers. Um. And then and just go back a little bit in terms of a backup. Um. It's honestly DTR this week, but I, I really think he's got to. If it's not RG three, which I'm not even saying it is RG three, I just thought that was an interesting name. And yeah. if he has been keeping himself in shape. He said he can still throw a football eighty yards. Right. Um. So if he if he's still got ability and he can take care of the ball, and I mean, why not give him a call? Full deploy was one of the first people I thought in spite of yeah. football. He's had he's had a um, he's went on to have a really solid backup. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're one of the more dependable backups in the league. And again, I'm not saying you bring him in that he tilts the scales towards a Super Bowl. But no. I, that that was another guy that his name popped up. Um, if I was somebody like Ryan Tannehill, which we've seen fake reports out there, I would be asking for a release. Like he's not going, he's not fighting for the Titans ever again. You know, yeah. like I, I would be like, hey, can you release? I'd be calling my agent saying, Hey, ask them to release me and also go call the Browns and let them know like if they release me, I want to come there. Uh, a chance to start. I would take Ryan Tannehill on this team. He's played on a team that's got a similar mold to this run game, strong offensive line, like run first play action. Like he can come here and play well enough for us to get to the playoffs. You know what I mean? And 
And again, I understand we're going to win a Super Bowl, but I think if you, if you can take this break, I said on online, if you can get to the playoffs, if Kevin Stefanski drags this Brantley team to the playoffs, yes, I'm going to be a sufferer. Uh, Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, I just think um, you gotta. Get, I just think you gotta get somebody because, like you said, you can't go back to PJ Walker. You gotta give the you other can't. fifty-three guys in the locker room. Like, you gotta do what's right by them. You can't. And to me, like, if they go and let's say I'm just throwing a name out there, let's say they go get like a Kellen Mond or something. Like to me, I'm just like, so we're just punting on the season. Is that what we're doing? Like, <laughs> we're, is that what we're really doing? And and I could be really, really wrong. I could be way off. Maybe maybe this kid has progressed nicely. But I, all I heard was, you know, we're we're really confident with DTR and what he can do. And then I was watching that game and very un like very unconfident. My the only thing I'll say is going into this game, Browns fans have some patience. Yeah, have some patience with this kid. If you if you are a true fan, you cannot go into this game and lose hope after the first drive. If it with we go out or if he throws a ball in the dirt. If I'm at the stadium and somebody starts booing in front of me, they're getting popcorn. I'm just throwing popcorn at them the whole game. It's and it's just so ridiculous. Like the expectations that we put on this team, especially like I've 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 went to games and we've cheered for teams that couldn't win a damn game all season, and then we actually have a good product that we that we think they can go really good places. Maybe it's maybe it's just me and you. I don't know. Like I know the dogs. We we really believe in this team, but I'm saying like. I feel like the fan base is so divided. Like we, like we're rolling this garbage product out there every week. And sometimes there's things that happen. I mean, it's not always pretty, but I mean, we're six and three. Are we really booing six and three? And then you're, you're booing a rookie quarterback in a second start against Pittsburgh. Come on guys. Come on now. Please don't. Uh, Justin's getting pretty mad anticipating it. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. Like if anything, if you're at the, like the, the the we are gonna play an important part in the home games now. Like we gotta yes. we gotta keep these guys up because I mean the, to be honest, we're asking them to go out and do like it's already hard to win games. I mean they've had to overcome obstacle after obstacle after obstacle and they just keep fighting. You heard Kevin Safansky say we're gonna fight because that's what we do, which I loved. I thought that was a good quote. Yes. Um and so like we gotta we gotta stand up for these guys. I completely agree. Like Let's go. These guys have overcome so much already this season to put themselves in the position that we haven't been in many times. Like, let's just, let's stay behind these guys. Yep. Um, so we already kind of talked about a little bit what to expect out of DTR against the Steelers. Um, this game, we should have won the first game. If we, if we had taken me every single play on offense in the second half, we would have won. You know what I mean? Like, if we went to the water boy offense, we win this game. Um, I, I fully expect the defense to be just as good. In yeah. This game. Like, but the Steel, it's not like we played the Steelers offense early and then they've really figured it out. They're still just as putrid today on offense yeah. as they have. They still haven't gone over 400 yards ever under Matt Canada. They've been out um, game in every, every single yeah. game this year. That's crazy. You know, the, the big the, the thing I, the, with the Steelers is they just don't lose games. They they sure. they don't give them the away. Yeah. They wait for you to make the mistake. They just come out and they just play their strength and they just play solid and they just do what they do and they wait for you to make the big mistake and they they just don't beat themselves. They, yep. You beat you. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's why I'm so adamant about not turning because if we don't bring the ball and work, I work the Steelers. I really don't think they can score enough points to hit. Um, so, one thing that does scare me though is you heard Tom, they're making the switch to Jalen Warren. And Jalen Warren's a stud. I think he's I think he's way better than Najee. Yes, yeah. like the getting him to the ball in the war is in for their offense. Uh, so that I, I we got to auto him up and then just. No, no busting coverages. They, they they scored on the one George Pickens uh, touchdown last yep. time we played. Only just with a, a miscommunication. Basically, the only miscommunication of our secondary all season. Uh, yep. So just no busting coverages. And I just look for the defense to be nasty. One interesting thing about Pickett is 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 QBR's quarterback rating through the first three quarters is abysmal. Yet somehow in the fourth quarter, it's 
He's like one of the best in the league. Um, so you you gotta don't give this kid a chance to you know to make a drive at the end because for some reason this guy can play terrible for ninety nine percent of the game and they need a drive for points at the end to go win it and he goes five for five for sixty five yards in the touchdown. It's like wait where did that come from? He hasn't done that old game. Uh, so let's, let's, let's just take him out of it early. You know what I mean? Like let's just agree. Let's go. Let's go ten nothing and then just scoring and, and it's like knees on offense. O- offensively, they I think that they've really you you touched on it. Jalen Warren, they they have a a pretty good split between those two between Warren and Najee Harris. Uh, Najee's kind of been playing better as of late, like I would say the last two or three games. But um, I think that that you can expect a lot of that. I think you're going to expect a lot of Jalen Warren, a lot of Najee Harris. Um, Deontay Johnson, I think is is pretty much back, but he's very up and down, you know, but he's still a, a nice threat for them if they can get him the ball. And obviously, uh, you touched on, um, on, uh, Pickens. He's, he's, he's unreal. He's, he's an, an athletic freak wide receiver. It's just, they, they cannot get him the ball because the quarterback play has not been great for them. I think you also mentioned it. They, their strength is the defense. They, that is how they're going to stay in this game. That is how if they're going to win this game. They're going to feast on opportunities and they're very, very, very well coached. It's kind of criminal how underrated I think Tomlin, uh, Mike Tomlin, not uh, not Canada. I'm talking about, I think that people don't, don't give him the, uh, his, his dues. I think he's a incredible coach. And some of the teams that he's led along, uh, like almost, you know, uh, like Duck Hodges type teams, and the guy's never been under five hundred. Um, they'll they'll stick around. It, I wouldn't expect a blowout at all, especially now. I mean, they're going to be frisky. They're going to want to be in it. They're, this is another one of those rivalries. They, they would, I think they have a yeah. chance to take over first and win the division. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're going to come out. Uh, yeah, I just got notification that Joe Burrow's hurt. Oh boy. Well, that's tough. I don't know what it is. I just saw he's in the medical tent. If and I don't know if Lamar's back in, but um, Lamar is back it, in. It I just seen him throw a pass. Yeah, we're gonna one well, of the end of this episode. I guess we'll find out. You guys will know tomorrow. But the, I don't know how serious these injuries are right now. But I mean, that'd be kind of crazy if three of the four starting quarterbacks in the AFC North go out for an extended period of time and within you know a day of, yeah. of each other. Um, no, it's it's. It's going to be an ugly game. It's going to be, uh, we. I don't think we can get down early because I don't think DTR is going to go fourteen or fourteen in the second half. Now we got to keep it competitive. Whether this, we use the crowd. You know, when you come out, make them weather the storm. Like they, mm-hmm. they're coming into our house. We gotta, we gotta protect uh, Cleveland Brown Stadium, and yes. uh, and then just come out, run the ball, control the clock, and just play smart. Just play some. Just just play smart. And um, and I think we have a chance to win this game. I I, yeah. I, I think we I think we can win an ugly football game uh, on Sunday. And man, if we do, Steelers face I'm gonna so hard. <laughs> I I I you basically touched on all of it. I, I expect our defense to be very very nasty, very aggressive. Um, <laughs> hopefully, if there we don't want to have any turnovers for our offense. But it'd be nice to keep that kind of rolling for us on the defense. We've we've seen them kind 100%. of put together put together some turnovers and kind of almost be winning the turnover battle uh, lately. As of late, um, I expect Miles to have a nice game. Um, I'm also, want, you know, go ahead, buddy, go ahead. I want Miles at like this is this is kind of like a uh, defensive player of the year, like head to head battle. You know, like mm-hmm. him and TJ Watt. I'd love to see him kind of like kind of like really step up this game. You know what I mean? Kind of be like, kind of put the country, like the whole, the whole league on notice. Like, hey, we just played each other. And I just outdoed this guy, uh, and my team got the win because I had three sacks or whatever. like. So I kind of, I expect a big game out of Miles. So he's been doing it all season. Agreed. Yep. Um, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up. This is the first time that Justin oh, yeah. and I have ever done an episode just by ourselves. Uh, oh, so you, you guys just witnessed history. <laughs> this is just kind of what it looks like where we're just bullshitting just on the normal yeah uh so we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up we appreciate you guys hanging out with us uh hopefully maybe both the two uh teams that are playing right now lose i don't know if that's possible but we'll see uh 
Hopefully the Browns come out with a big win on Sunday. Hopefully we can get a good performance out of uh, DTR or at least a, a, a zero turnover performance out of them this week and then build on it going forward. Don't bail on the Browns, guys. I really think these guys are going to rally around DTR. They're going to rally around uh, Coach Schwartz and Kevin. And I, I think they're still, like, everything we want to do is still out there. We can yep. still win the division, still win the playoffs. So don't bail on this team. Uh, be loud on, if you're up there on Sunday. Make them feel us, uh, you know, all green style, all that good stuff. Um, we will see you guys next week talking about a, uh, a big win, potentially put us in the driver's seat of the division. So thank you. We'll see you guys uh, Monday or Tuesday. Go Browns. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.